What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Miles Horror Podcast. Today with us is um, Jordan. He works over at he scare acted over at the uh, Dark Horizon event in Orlando. Jordan, how you doing, man? I'm doing great, bud. How are you? You know what? I'm, I'm getting by. You know, little by little, uh, living like we said, living the dream, man. So just trying to do what I can to, to get around. You know. Absolutely. <laughs> same here. Same here. Here. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, what? Uh, so let's get into this, man. I talked to uh, I talked to Burdetta uh, a few weeks ago about this uh, event, and mm-hmm. uh, this is definitely one that I, I, I it's on my list to check out uh, in the future uh, if they ever return or whatnot. I, I definitely want to check this out. I'm a huge fan of Dark Harbor out here in, in uh, California, and uh, when I found out they were doing Dark Horizon yes. over in Orlando, I thought that was a, a fantastic idea. What did you think about it for its first time, uh, you know, opening up in Orlando and, and, and how much fun did you have doing this event, man? Yeah, when I, it's a funny story because I was working other horror events out here at the time and for and, um, them in the past that events back home in California where I'm originally from right. and they said, Hey, we're trying to bring a West coast style hunt out to Orlando. And, um, they're like, you know, we remember working with you and we want to bring sliders to the mix and everything as well. And I'm, they're like, how would you like to come on and join us? And I was like, I heard them. I saw it was with the same ones that did dark Harbor and all that. It's just like you said, love that event. It's a great event. So I'm like, all right, let's see what this is like out here. And, it was definitely the best way to describe it initially would be a very great chaotic control, like controlled chaos. Awesome. Like West coast style Han event that just needed to have more room, but it was awesome. It was great for what it was. Um, it had a lot of areas you could go to, but it just, you could tell it just wanted to get bigger. It just wanted more room, just like at dark Harbor. Yeah. You know, they got that whole backdrop there with the cruise ship and everything so but i loved it it was still a great event i mean it was probably one of the best yeah i was trying to think best horror events for sure that worked probably top four top five nice man i mean i it's honestly like i I had a bunch of friends who went out to uh to check it out um and they they had a blast doing it and it seemed like a fun time honestly for a first time event uh, they they really know they they literally took what they knew from Dark Harbor and kind of incorporated it into this a new event where they kind of started a new story and and mm-hmm. had had its own mazes. It, it almost to me felt like an extension of Dark Harbor, just on a different coast and with with new characters and new story. You know Absolutely, I mean? yeah, hundred um, percent, yeah, yeah. I I was really digging the whole. I mean, there was a lot of two. Oh, go ahead, go, go, go. Oh no, you're good, man. I'm, I'm saying. Just going off what you were saying, you're totally right. An extension of Dark Harbor essentially is what it was. Right. You know, that whole storyline that you get from Dark Harbor all the time that a lot of people go there for with their characters and everything with the hidden bars, the hidden, the hidden like scavenger hunts pretty much just came over here. Right. No, and I, I really I really dig that. I mean, they, they really incorporated a lot of stuff that they do over here at Dark Harbor with, of course, the uh you know you you had a sliding team you had a show and then they had of course their version of how they do mazes and then their style of mazes uh and and really what will really put dark harbor on the map is the whole history of the boat with the whole original characters and whatnot and they really incorporated that over there which i really liked well yeah yeah, yeah man definitely 100 percent. and if they brought also the story that created dark horizon was very fitting for florida especially with the characters that they were picking made it even that much better. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I really, uh, from what I heard from Burdetta, I mean, she had a, a blast going out there and, and really, and really bringing her, uh, kind of a, a new character, a new twist on, on a, a character she's already played and, and really have like a name and a story with it. Um, yeah, I, I thought that was really, really cool. And, and to see that kind of become its own thing, was really cool. So talk to us about what you did at the event, man. I, I understand you were a, a slider. Uh, what did you do in specific at the event? So oh, um, when they came to me about doing the sliding there at Dark Horizon, um, sliding has not been something in Florida. Yeah. Um, like some haunts events have tried it, um, but the two events specifically I know that have tried it, 
failed at it. And when I mean failed at it, they had like lawsuits on their hands. Wow. Like kind of things because they didn't take the time to show whoever was doing it and teach people truly, you know, hey, this is awesome what you're doing, but it takes a lot of a certain type of different kind of fitness and body control and multiple other things. So um, when they brought me on and um, another friend of mine who had done it as well at Not not Scary Farm in California, um, they brought us on. They were like, you two are going to help Scott and them, who works for Dark uh, Harbor and does their event every year, um, teach a whole new group of people how to slide. So we spent like two or three weeks, which is not that long when you think of it, um, for the event, teaching all these other people to do it. So we did the event. We were kind of if you want to call them like street coordinators right. slash scare actors. So we were kind of watching everything, but also still scary. And then we also tried to encompass our own little ship. So like dark Harbor does as well. Right. Uh, and, and I think that's something that really makes dark Harbor's event too. And it's cool to see that it went out to Orlando was the slider show. It's something that really showcases the talents and, and really showcases overall what the slider team can do. Uh, what would you say the oh, big absolutely. difference was between your guys' show and, and Dark Harbor's show? I think that's the, the biggest difference definitely was just starting with basics. Right. You know, you watch Dark Harbor's show over the years and those guys and girls, and they're doing like, they're jumping like lines of people on the ground of their own people, like eight to 10 deep, you know? Right. With us, there was only two of us that knew how to jump already. So, We could only do so much of that. So I'd say more so it was just going back to the simple stuff of like, you know, like say you're going through a line of people that's maybe just five people, but then Dark Harbor is doing 10 people. We're jumping maybe five people. They're jumping like eight people. And we were doing it, even though we know, me and my buddy knew we could do more, we had to keep it simple so that everyone else could kind of incorporate some of what they were learning to do as well. But for out here in Florida, most of the people out here are tourists or locals. They had never seen any of this before, really. And if they had, it was on YouTube videos or something. Right. So they were just excited to see something different that the events even like Howl Scream and Halloween Horror Nights really don't even do here. Right. Yeah, because uh, – so. and that's something I always bring up too is Halloween Horror Nights is more of a kind of a scripted format where they have their essential kind of theming. The, you know, their scare zones are, are really themed and their mazes are themed. So they have their essential kind of storyline they do where you don't see really sliding happening at that. Now, when you go down to like Knott's and, and, and Queen Mary and, and Dark Horizon, you know, the, the kind of the big name haunts, but still kind of not as massive as Horror Nights, you know, they they really incorporate yep. the sliding and they really incorporate different methods of scaring, which I think for me as a guest is a lot more entertaining and and whatnot because you get to see different people do different things and incorporate their own styles of how they would would take on a scare what are some of the styles that you like to use uh, other than sliding obviously uh when it came down to scaring at this event man because this event obviously was uh like i said it was the first of its kind over there in orlando so a lot of people were probably just kind of shocked to see something new you know Yeah, um, um, my style that I've always done of scaring, I've always said is this, you have to be, um, you have to mix it up. You cannot stick to one thing. And I've always told sliders this too. You are a slider, but sliding is not the only thing you do. If you just keep sliding every five seconds, first off, you're gonna kill your body. You're gonna be tired as hell by like halfway through the night. And um, and also it's just, it's boring to be honest with you. Like, I mean, as, as much as we all love it, it's, you know, if that's all you're doing and you're not incorporating other th- things into it, it's got, it's not going to, it's going to be boring to them. It's also going to be boring to you. And the whole thing is for you to be hyped the whole time. And for me, what I've always had is you, you incorporate what character you are also. Like I was supposed to be like a zombie pirate. Right. So you want to incorporate some of that type of aspect, of what your character is, the zombie part of it while being a pirate kind of right. into your scaring in a way. And then my thing's always been, I said, quick movements, quick scary, just quick attack type scares, this, that. Because if the faster you are with your motion, whether it's sliding or even just moving your hand or if you have a shaky cam, whatever it is, it will throw the person off. Right. Because 
speed is something that people are never ready for. And we all know that people love to drink at these events. So when you're <laughs> drinking, anything that's fast is going to be 10 times faster than them. So, yeah. um, so that's always what I've incorporated. Do some sliding, get up, get into character a little bit, and then boom, go into kind of a quick scare. And then get into character, you know, you're in character, and then boom, do a quick slide. You know, for me, it's always speed. Everything I do is a lot of just speed, small motions, but fast. Yeah. You, you mentioned, uh, you know, Scott Dieterman earlier, a uh, good friend of ours on the channel, too. Um, and uh, yes, actually part of the reason why uh, this interview is happening, because he uh, helped set this one up. So shout out to Scott. Thank you. Um, yes, absolutely. Uh, but, you know, y you mentioned, obviously, you had a two to three week uh, a period of just training to get these guys ready. Um, and I remember talking to Scott a little bit about this, where, you know, it was kind of just two to three weeks, set them up, show them what they're doing. And then I was out of there. Um, after the two to three week training, did you feel everyone was prepared? Or do you think an extra week would have helped to like fully prepare everyone? Like, I, I don't know how everyone did. I, you know, I wasn't there, but uh, Scott was telling me that yep. there was a lot of great people that, that, that succeeded after the training and whatnot and, and went on to, 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 to bring the show to life. Do you think an extra week would have helped? Or do you think that two to three weeks was, it, it worked, it helped out a lot? I think an extra week would have helped make people more comfortable in doing things that were more suited to their type of style and, and their body type too, and how they slide. Right. You know, I think the the time we had was great to get the basics and then to get the safety part down, right. so that at least like, hey, what you've been taught, you can go out there and and do sliding. Right. Now to mix it up, to make it fit more you, to maybe kind of see, hey, you're better at being, you know, your slides are great when you're going a little bit further distance. You're a more quick person and this, that. That could have been more incorporated probably in that last week if we could have had it, just to make it more personalized to each person. What, what are they really good at and what are they maybe not so good at? That probably would have been the best. But other than that, everybody was, like Scott said, everybody picked it up pretty quickly, which is pretty impressive for right. considering what they're being asked to do. Right. Uh, now you're fasting for you're fast forwarding to uh, opening day, man. I mean, you know, chills are running down. Brand new event. You guys are opening up this event together, and you don't know what the reaction is going to be like. Um, talk to me what it was like uh, yep. approaching that first day, man. So yeah, that first night there was obviously, as there always is in Orlando now, a ton of you know media. And the local, like, you got Tractions Magazine, you have all these different, like, uh, media out sources, even local news stations that it's something big, it's something new. Right. And um, they obviously were hyping up the fact that it was coming from, you know, L.A. area. It wasn't just some random haunt. It has a haunt connection to a, a big one on the West Coast. And, um, yeah, we were getting everybody together. Um, I, was, I was just excited to slide again. It had been a little bit since I had done it. So um, it was fun to do that initially at an event again and uh, the reaction when they uh, opened they did that opening ceremony just like they do at dark harbor right. they kind of open the gates and all the monsters kind of rush out of the fog and um i will say this the reaction of the definitely the first line of people seeing the sliders come out first from the fog was definitely awesome because they were not ready for that they were not yeah. informed of what was coming they were not you know of what was going to happen but to see eight people essentially coming at you sliding on their knees and spinning and stuff like it was definitely a great reaction. And you could tell from there the tone was set for the rest of the night. And the best way that I read that it was described, but also the way I would describe it too, is that Dark Horizons is one, it was one big like Halloween party. That's kind of what it was. It was kind of like a Halloween party festival thing. And now it's kind of the mood of what it was. Right. I mean, I just got, honestly, I got goosebumps just hearing that opening gate uh, sliders coming at you, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> It's been it's been too long since I've seen anything <laughs> oh, like absolutely. that. Oh, absolutely, nothing you know? like that, right? <laughs> yeah, nothing like that at absolutely. all, man. Um, you know, uh, so obviously, you know, you get started. What are before you get started every night, though? What are some of the things you like to uh, you like to do to prepare yourself mentally? Are you a guy who blasts music? Do you sense silence? Do you just well, how do you prepare yourself mentally for that? Um, for me, it's. When, I, when I'm driving to an event or driving, like in this case, when I was driving to Dark Horizons, it's always, yeah, I'm playing music. Uh, my go-tos for me are uh, Lincoln Park and 30 Seconds to Mars. Nice. Uh, they both get me hyped up, uh, so I get those going. Um, and then when I get 
this is the event though i'm kind of um i gotta do a lot of prep work you know taping my ankles up getting my shoes ready to go um you gotta put zip ties through your shoes for sliding because if you put um if you put uh, laces the laces can catch fire right. so we had to do zip ties right. for our laces so that takes some time and then you know lots of stretching and um and then i kind of just go into my zone i make sure everybody's good if anybody needed anything like because you know i brought extra stuff just in case and then i kind of just go in my zone for a minute just kind of like get back you know into the groove of a hot season essentially right yeah i mean i i i really like to hear how people prepare to for these events because you don't really get to hear the behind the scenes too much rather as a guest you're just kind of seeing full front this is the show this is what's happening you know so i like to see how people yes. mentally prepare for a night like this because uh, in your case being a slider obviously the, the, there's a lot of like you said a lot of it's a lot of exercise and whatnot to your body a lot of like uh, a lot of a lot on your body pretty much and i feel like yes. always always preparing that for that mentally for the night it, it's always one of those things where you just kind of kind of you know stretch it out get it all prepared and, and just kind of prepare your body for the night you know properly that way you don't pull anything or accidentally get in an accident of some sort but you were saying obviously oh, with the, yeah. with the good thing with 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 you guys is you guys taught them of course the safety of it which i think is a big thing with slide i've talked to scott uh, about this numerous times i think that's one of the biggest things people just think you could put on a pair of pads and go out there and do it there's so much safety behind it though oh absolutely yeah and that's the thing too like you i mean you hit you hit the you know head of the nail there with People think literally like, oh, oh yeah, put some pads on. And I'll just go out there and throw myself on the ground and see me go, you know? Yeah. And it's like, that's not it. And I've seen people get hurt doing that a lot. And right. that was a problem with the, one of the events in uh, Florida that I had done it a couple of years ago is that they essentially did that. They, they told everybody, hey, you need to go out and buy this. Here you go. And they didn't have anybody teaching them. And, and like I've seen people, if you do not, if you do not know, how to take off you do not know how to prepare your the impact on your knees if you do not know how to stop especially you are going to destroy your knees and your hips yeah and then also the biggest thing is always the guests also you do not want to obviously hurt the guests and um yeah if you it's just safety is just a huge thing and one of the biggest tests that we always have done, at least that events i've done and seen it what scott preaches all the time and his test that he does is the, the stopping test. He will, he himself will stand there and he will have you go full force sliding and you have to stop at a certain mark right before him to be able to go on. And that's one of his tests that he does for his sliders at Dark Harbor. And he brought it here as well. And everybody had to do that same test because that's one of the biggest ones is going and stopping and not just stopping at something you know is in front of you, but stopping at that guest that randomly tries to jump in front of you because they're drunk or they didn't see you and they just happen to come into your path you know, the stuff that you're not prepared for and all that. Right. Um, so obviously, uh, you know, the event opens and uh, from what I hear from my friends, from, from other outlets, it's a, it's a success. People are enjoying it. People are having a good time. Um, obviously, my, my favorite thing that I love talking about with, with scare actors and whatnot is uh, some funny stories, man. Uh, talk to me. Do you have any good funny stories that happened to you uh, out there on the streets that year? Uh, yes. The minute you said funny, <laughs> something came right in my head. Um, so there they have, um, they had one of the bars that were set up. They had a, a dark rises, and dark harbor are very well known for their theme bars. Right. And one of the main bars that they had was this pirate theme bar. Yeah. And it was in the middle of the event and the walkway to come out of it is the kind of a straight shot into kind of like sliders alley and dark harbor, very similar area. At dark horizon um so all those for all of you that have been to dark uh harbor you know what i mean when i say sliders out right and um a lady was coming out she'd obviously been enjoying herself <laughs> she had multiple drinks you could tell but she was carrying a bunch of drinks for her group of friends <laughs> that obviously she was meeting up with and she's walking out and i'm standing there i had just finished scaring a group of people so i kind of stood up and i was Kind of going towards this area that we traditionally like to slide a lot. Right. She, she he doesn't see her at all coming, but he he's doing fine. He's got his clear path. He did everything right. He was going. So he goes. She stands there and she comes right in front of him for a moment as he was going, 
Like she's trying to, almost like as if someone's trying to make the crosswalk before the car goes over the, you know, yeah. the line. And um, she's walking. He goes, he is one of the better sliders that we had this year. He's small. So he happened to get smaller and went between her legs. <laughs> oh, to wow. Avoid making contact with her. She looks down and literally tosses the drinks everywhere. And as she tosses them, she naturally just falls on her ass. So, sorry, <laughs> or, but, you know, if I can say that, but falls on her, falls backward, and the drinks literally, just like a cartoon, land on top of her. Just like a cartoon, <laughs> but, like those typical, absolutely perfect. And it was great because he didn't touch her at all. He, he made it right between her legs, but I don't think she expected to see a slider literally go between her legs as she was trying to walk. It was truly impressive, actually. I don't think I honestly, in the history of doing this show, I don't even think I've ever heard a story of someone sliding under someone's legs like that. Like, oh, I've never seen it before until then. I, I'm yeah. so impressed by that, blown away that yeah. he, he actually had, you know, he had the space and he had the, and he, obviously being as small as he is, he actually made the slide on top of that, making the girl oh, drop yeah, all her drinks and everything. Dude, that's hilarious. I love that. It was, I mean, and luckily she got up and she was laughing too. I mean, she was intoxicated, so she really did. But luckily everybody had a good laugh. They bought her her drinks. They, they comped them for her and it was great though. But like I said, I've never seen that before. A, a slider be able to get through a guest legs last second like that. That was impressive. It's just improvising right on the spot, dude. I really, that's really cool when, when they get creative and, and do things like that. I, I really enjoy seeing oh, stuff absolutely. like that. I mean, it, it makes the event so much fun. Um, you mentioned you were a zombie pirate. So talk to me about the overall theming of Dark Horizon for its first year. Uh, give me a little bit of details of, of sell me this show, man. I want to know more about it. Yeah. So they were doing, um, it's been, it's actually been a couple of years now since the event. I've worked a couple other events now. Um, so I may not get all the exact names right at each thing, but they essentially had the history of Florida, but like dark Florida. Right. as their theme essentially like so the one one of the houses which was essentially a pirate themed house it was a full-on pirate ship they built a pirate ship wow. as the house and as you went through you know you were in the bowels of this um essentially like you know the the coast of florida in the past had been always riddled with pirates way back in the history of florida so they were kind of trying to pull from that being for this house and obviously with pirates there's stories of ghosts and zombies and dead pirates so that's kind of a lot of, it was the tales of all these different you know you know for like whatever you want to call them historical facts or stories and all these things within different settings in this pirate ship and a cool thing about the pirate ship was there was a hidden bar in the pirate ship that you had no clue about unless you were kind of given the little uh hint about where it was at and at the end of the pirate ship you had to walk the plank essentially and they had a slide so to get out of the house you had to go down an inflatable slide that went off the pirate ship into the water essentially cool. where they had like the it looked like you know yeah you didn't see where you were going because of all the fog so you just went down this pit and you're like oh there goes my friend yeah. you know what i mean <laughs> so that's kind of the theme that i was with yeah i was a dead pirate from that area that had like you know disease ridden and all that and then they had a house more so to like the everglades and like the back like bayou kind of woodsy in somewhat still bayou that's more louisiana but florida has stuff similar to that but everglades swampy areas of florida with you know like the locals that are kind of like a little bit weird maybe some like you know texas chainsaw leatherface moments yeah. you know kind of yeah, people yeah. in there um uh, yeah and that was that was one of the better ones too because they just built this massive village almost or this town in florida uh, the everglades in the middle of this event and um and they were kind of i believe if i remember a lot of characters they were kind of like cannibals and stuff and um then the other part the third house was all voodoo very um north florida i think i believe had a lot of that to go on to, to it so again everything you get with a voodoo house they had it i mean they had like the crazy you know dancers and people that were putting like you know like knife down their throat putting fire on their hair you know and all this crazy stuff yeah. and um it definitely was the creepier of the houses so each house kind of had its thing but like 
the voodoo was the very much more scary, creepy, and then the Everglades Swamp House was kind of more of just the disgusting and like, oh, this is just weird. And then the pirate one was like, it was, it had its scary moments, but it was kind of more of the have a good time house, you know? Right. I, I really like that too, because it, it looks like it, it kind of took all the, the tropes of, of not only horror, but just like like you said the historical um area of florida itself you know you have a section for pirates you have a section for swamps you have a section for voodoo obviously and i, I really think it, it's really cool because it's almost like three stories told and it just combines into one which is really cool so i really yep. like yeah i really love exactly. it when, That's all. when haunts do that dude it's it's amazing it's it's really cool i really mm-hmm. i really dig that yeah haunts really need to have if they have a theme and they have a good theme, I mean, it makes it that much better. You know what I mean? It, it truly does. It makes the haunt that much better. Yeah. So, uh, Jordan, you know, the the event goes for the whole season. It, it's a success. Uh, closing night comes, man. What are your what are your uh, overall thoughts uh, going into closing night, man? Uh, bittersweet. Uh, um, I was working uh, two uh, horror events that year, so. Um, it was my uh, final night with Dark Horizons, and yeah, it was it was just like like to be a part of and thrown into. Um, was coming to an end. It seemed like it had just started, and and now it was ending. But it honestly, it was a lot. There's it was a little bit, um, you know, sad in terms of like growing up in California and uh, living there for so long and working those haunts and all that. And having that little taste of home here, it was kind of sad to see it leave and see it be uh, done because I got to see a lot of friends I hadn't seen in a while that worked for Dark Harbor. And just to be at an event that had sliders, to be in that event that had like that whole kind of different, more, you want, I want to say hometown hot vibe, but it's truly, it's the, it's the term, it's like West Coast hot. There's a difference. You know, if you go to a West Coast hot compared to like some of the haunts out here, there is a difference. So to see that kind of like come to an end, it was a little sad, but it was, I was so happy to be a part of it. And, you know, however long they decide to want to do it in the future or not, um, it'll just be cool to say that I did it and I was there for the first year. Yeah, man, that, that's, that's amazing, man. And, and like I said, I was talking to Berdetta about it and she, she felt the exact same way, man. It, it was really hard for her to leave, oh, yeah. you know, Dark Harbor. But then when she came over here to Horizon, you know, she, she made do with what she had with it and she had a fun time and, and she, she said, she said the exact same thing. She, she was great. She was extremely honored to be really the face and kind of be part of that first year. You know, I mean, how many people can say they've actually opened a haunt, you know, it's, it's nuts. Oh, absolutely. Exactly. And to work with people like her, you know, is awesome. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's truly, it's truly an honor. It's awesome. Yeah, man. Uh, so, I mean, it, it sounds like it's a fun time, dude. And, I, and I'm and i hoping in the future they, they do, uh, you know, obviously build on it uh, with its first, you know, with its first year having three mazes, maybe the next year or whenever they come back, wherever they come back. Um, you know, they, they add another house. They, you know, they, they add more to it. They get a bigger location for everyone to kind of so they can expand on it, expand the story and lore, like how they built over here with Dark Harbor. So I, I'm really excited to see where this event goes in the future, man. I, I really can't wait to see uh, where this leads to. I mean, it, this feels like it, it was a solid start. They, they established overall what they want mm-hmm. to do story wise and, 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 and lore and whatnot. So I'm super excited to see how this whole event will expand in the future, man. And Hopefully we get to see you down there. Hopefully we get to make a trip down there, and uh, we'll see what happens. Man. Uh, I'm excited. Yeah, absolutely. I can't. I I can't wait to see what the future holds because the more haunts, the better, is what I say. Especially for us during haunt season. Especially during haunt season, man. The more haunts, the better. The more we get to travel, the more we get to see who's got better originals. You know, we get to compare all these things. It's fun, man. I love doing it all. It's a it's a really fun time. Exactly. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Could agree more. One last question before I let you leave today, brother. Um, you know, I've enjoyed talking to you, yes. getting to know Dark Horizon a little bit more, and it's been a, a fun, a fun journey uh, exploring this world more. Uh, I ask my guests this question all the time because obviously a lot of people in the horror community are horror fans. So, do you have a favorite horror film? Favorite horror film, man. Yeah, <laughs> that is not easy, but I will definitely say my favorite horror film has got to be the original Psycho. Oh, you Jeff- know what? 
definitely the original psycho. It is. <laughs> I don't get that answer a lot. <laughs> That's a good. Yes. Point. Yes. It's a, you get it. You, you hear a lot of the same ones somewhat still and newer ones, but the original psycho for what it is, especially, I mean, I know it's an old film, it's black and white, but if you watch that even now, it's a little weird and creepy. Like, oh yeah, it really is still creepy to this day. It holds true and to the test of time. Yeah. Alfred Hitchcock, he had that's truly a masterpiece in the horror industry, I believe. Dude, that that guy was was horror royalty, dude. That guy changed the face and genre of the the whole genre itself. He changed it, man. He he guided it into a new direction. Uh, uh, and so, absolutely, I I, I agree. Uh, Psycho is a ph phenomenal film, man, and. I, I don't think uh, there will ever be another Alfred Hitchcock ever to live again, honestly. Probably not. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I agree with you. He was definitely a man of his time and uh, lives on today. And his, his work lives on today. So. Yeah. So. Universal Studios makes it clear that Alfred Hitchcock had a bungalow on the damn lot to this day, man. They don't want people to forget yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Every every studio tour, they got to let you know. <laughs> yeah, that was Alfred Hitchcock's office, and right up the street is the Bates Motel and the Bates House. So that's, yep. that's Absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. Uh, well, Jordan, it's been a pleasure talking. Thank you for uh, the, uh, taking the time out of your day to do this for us, man. We really appreciate learning more about Dark Horizons, man. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. Definitely. I, I, I love talking horror and haunts. So anytime. Yeah, brother. Well, uh, we appreciate you. We hope to see you uh, in the future doing this again, man. Uh, who knows what the future will hold for all of us, man. So we're hoping to see you back out there pretty soon. And yeah. we, can't, we can't wait, man. We can't wait. Yep. Sounds good. Hope everybody you know, stays healthy and well so that we can enjoy these for years to come. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. With all that being said, uh, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you guys did, smash that like button. And if you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button with that bell notification beware every time we put up a new video. Uh, we have social media at the Knights of Horror on Instagram and at Knights of Horror on Twitter. With all that being said, uh, we want to thank you guys for tuning in again, and we'll see you guys next week. You're moving into a dimension of life.